That's what they get for making cannibalism illegal in the games. Hello, and welcome to my review of the novel, The Hunger Games. Now, I'm sure that you're all familiar with the plot of The Hunger Games, so, without further ado, I will, s I will simply proceed to my analysis of the novel. Okay, now, first of all, the main protagonist of this novel, Katniss Everdeen, is extremely impulsive and whiny. For example, at one point in this novel, she is practicing in front of the game makers so that they can see her skills and rank her amongst the other tributes. And she's like, oh, it's gonna be such a great idea to send an arrow shooting at a pig that they're eating. And then she does so. And then for the next ten pages, she whines about, oh, that was such a terrible idea, even though I was so sure that that was the best idea I've ever had. Ugh. And also, Katniss Everdeen appears to not have a soul, because you see, the first time she ever takes someone's life, she doesn't feel anything, and in fact doesn't even realize she's killed a person until later on in the book. It, and by later on, I mean at least like 30 pages later. You see, she feels nothing. She doesn't even realize she's killed a per another human being for the first time in her life. All she thinks about is, oh, I'm winning in the games, ha ha. And then, for like a paragraph, she thinks about it later. And that doesn't make any sense at all, because a grown man would have trouble slaying another human being, whereas this is a 16-year-old girl who has no experience in the field of killing anyone. I mean, sure, she hunts and stuff, but that's completely different from taking a person's life. And then there's Peta, the baker's son. And let's just say... Of course the baker names his son Peta. What did... Yeah. And then there's the character of Hamish, the man who is training the tri tributes of District 12 in preparation for the Hunger Games. And you see, he starts out and is established as a completely... a complete babbling idiot and a drunk. And then, later on, he's established as this wise guy, and then Katniss and Peter are all like, Oh, he's so wise, we have to listen to everything he says. He has so many good ideas. He knows he can help us win. Even though, earlier, Kat we, we know that Katniss was c thinking, Oh, this guy is so stupid, he's such a drunk. Which appears to be true at the beginning. But no, apparently, he has some kind of, like, really awesome, really fast AA meeting or something. And, like, he's completely rehabilitated within the course of a small train travel. And then he met, and, and I don't know, perhaps he has some big revelation. And the alcohol he appears to be drinking throughout his coherent speaking to the children later in the story is not affecting him at all magically because it's just some kind of mysterious liquid that appears to have the consistency and color of alcohol. And then you think, oh, maybe he's just hiding this because he has some ulterior motives. But then it dawns on you, this is a terribly written children's novel. Of course he doesn't have ulterior motives or is acting. So, after a bit of training and promotional things and the, the sort, the games begin, and let's just say I myself found the games to be quite repetitive. I mean, they threw in s twists here and there, but I still found the games themselves to just be thing after thing after thing that were so similar to a certain extent that it just became repetitive. So during the games, Katniss has several fireballs shot at her, and one of them badly burns her leg. And then this becomes a very serious problem, and she has to be sent an ointment to take care of this. So, apparently this ointment is magical, because as soon as she puts it on her leg, we never, we hardly ever hear anything about this bird again over the course of the novel. It's mentioned once in the next 10 or 20 pages, and then never again. Even though it's clearly stated this this is an extremely severe burn that she has received and that she is under a lot of pain. Apparently, 
that doesn't matter because it magically healed because of the ointment. And then we have the rules changes. Now you see, from the beginning of this book, I thought, okay, this book is going to end one of two or three ways. Katniss is going to win. Katniss and Peeta are gonna mag are gonna find a way to outsmart the game makers, and they're both gonna win. Or I'm going to throw this book across the room into the fireplace. And I don't even have a fireplace in this room, so I'd have to build one. That's how much it was frustrating me. Later... Okay. So in the very middle of this novel, there is an announcement that apparently there has been a random change to the rules. So now, PETA and Katniss can win. Which, to me, just felt like just some sloppy writing to throw in a random excuse for both of them to be able to win and them to be all lovey-dovey and a happy ending. But then, at the end of the games, there is an another announcement, right after they're the last two remaining, that says that this r rule has been revoked. And then, five minutes later, after they're about to kill themselves, that statement is revoked, and then... It just becomes somewhat convoluted, and they end up both winning after a lot of complex things, and almost killing themselves. This doesn't really make sense to me either, because Katniss has only been close to this male for approximately two weeks, and over the course of these two weeks, apparently she's fallen in love with him enough to sacrifice her life and end her, to end her life for him. Whereas two weeks ago, she was slamming him into the wall for saying he liked This also brings me to a point I wanted to make about Katniss being extremely fickle. And this also wraps into another part of the ending. You see, she does not have any idea what she wants. One minute, she's all, I'm gonna slam you in the wall, I don't like you. And then she's all like, oh, I'm gonna kill myself for you. Then, over the course of the last 10 or 15 pages of the book, she just is rambling on about how, oh, it was all an act during the games. I don't really have feelings for Pita. And then on the last paragraph of the book, she says, I can't get... And then on the last paragraph of the book, she says... I take his hand, holding on tightly, preparing for the cameras, and dreading the moment when I will finally have to let go. So now, apparently, she is completely in love with him again. The so one minute, she's rambling on, uh, actually several minutes, she's rambling on about how she has absolutely no non-platonic feelings for this gentleman, and then the book ends with her being like, Oh, I love Peter. I can't wait for his bread to go stale. Now, despite what I saw as sloppy writing and a rather unlikable protagonist, this book does m manage to be extremely interesting and has a rather intriguing setting, I'm, I might add. And because of this, it allowed me to finish the novel and enjoy the novel to some extent. And I don't know why, but I actually really like this book. I mean... It might seem like I hate this book, but I have no idea why, but I, for some reason, like this book. And now I, I end my review giving The Hunger Games three and a half out of five stars. I don't know why myself, but I liked it enough to give it that. <coughs> I know, it doesn't make any sense. But that's how I feel. Now, thank you for watching my review. I will be with you shortly with my review of the film The Hunger Games.